Okay, um, we've been working a little bit with different types of permutation problems, and we've developed the general permutation formula that if you have n number of distinct objects, and you select k number of them, the number of ways you can do that is n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. And before we develop this formula, we'd also show them that if you have n number of distinct objects and you select out n number of them, the, num the total number of ways you can do that is n factorial, and that is consistent with this notation here, because if we had this situation, this would be equal to n factorial over n minus n factorial, which of course is 0 factorial. And as we discussed in a previous video, this is 1. So this equals n factorial. Now what I'm doing in this video is consider situations where we have, say, an n number of objects, but not all of them are distinct. And in that situation, how many different permutations can you arrange? And in a lot of textbooks, the classic example that they use to illustrate the situation is the word Mississippi, where we have a lot of letters, but a lot of them are also repeated. So there's the word Mississippi. There's 11 letters total, but out of these 11 letters, we see that I is repeated four times, S is repeated two times, P is repeated two times. So how many permutations can we get out of the words that comprise Mrs. or out of the letters that comprise Mississippi? Now these are all distinct, and of course we would say, well, it's 11 factorial. There's 11 distinct letters. Here we don't have 11 distinct letters. So for right now, let's just say then that we have x factorial. And we certainly suspect, obviously, that x factorial is going to be less than 11 factorial. And how can we determine what this is? Well, let's take our, our letters from Mississippi and just write them out like this. 4 i's, 4 s's, 2 p's. So obviously not all the letters are identical, but for right now, let's do this. Let's put tags on these and make them identical. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so now the, all the i's are distinct, and same thing for the s's, 1, 2, 3, 4, same thing for the P's, 1, 2. Now with 11 distinct letters, we know that the number of permutations is 11 factorial. Well, let's go back to this situation where the letters are repeated. We're saying, okay, it's going to be X factorial, number of different arrangements that we can generate in this case. Okay, well, let's go back to this case. Here we say it's 11 factorial, but out of this 11 factorial, 4 factorial of them come from the i's that we made artificially distinct. Same thing for the s's, and same thing for the 2 p's. So what we can say then is that x factorial this, but we don't have those repeats, or we do have the repeats, excuse me, times this number, this number, and this number as if they were distinct. That has to equal 11 factorial then, or 
x factorial equals 11 factorial divided by 8. It looks like this. So the way we derive that is we realize here we've got repeats, so it's not going to be an 11 factorial number of arrangements. It's going to be x factorial, realizing this is less than 11. Here, we artificially made the letters distinct. We realized that when we did that, we added 4 factorial, another 4 factorial, and a 2 factorial that didn't exist before. So, what we can think of then is that this is comprised of the x factorial times this times this times this, or the x factorial, the number of arrangements when they are considered as repeat letters, comes out to be equal to this. Or, in general, we can say that if there are n number of objects, but they're not all distinct, maybe there's n one of them that are of a certain kind. And then there might be n2 number of them of another kind. And so forth. Now, to say the nk, here we would have nk number of yet another kind of object. Then, if we ask ourselves, okay, if not all the n objects are distinct, how many permutations can we get? So we'd say, well, in general, then, that would be equal to n factorial, the total number of objects, divided by the repeats. And 1 factorial, and 2 factorial, and 3 factorial, are now to and k factorial. So this, then, is our general formula when we're taking permutations but not all the objects are distinct. And I say our general formula, what we're considering now is we have n number of objects and we're asking then how many can the total number be permuted. For example, here in the word Mississippi, we know we have 11 letters but we know that the number of permutations is not 11 factorial. The number of permutations is the total number of letters factorial divided by the repeats. Four of the I's are repeated, four of the S's are repeated, and two of the P's are repeated. And that would be equal then to number of arrangements. So let's see, this is 11 times 10 times 9 times 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 4 factorial. We'll write that one out. Times 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2. So we have this. And let's see, that goes into there three times, four goes into eight, two times, three goes into nine, three times, two goes into ten, five times. So we have eleven times five, times three, times two, times seven, times 3 times 5. Multiply that out. That will give us the total number of arrangements then. 
that we could expect with these letters where we have a bunch of repeats interspersed there. Okay, um, there's still yet another interesting kind of problem that we can try to solve with the word Mississippi in a repeat situation. I don't think we have time to do it in this video. What we want to do is ask this question. Okay, we know that this is the number of distinct kinds of permutations that we can form with these letters here. Out of these permutations here, how many of them will be arranged so that the two P's are always separate from each other? And we're not going to have time, I think, to solve it in, that, in this video. So come back, join us in the next video. We'll pick up with our discussion of permutations with repeats, and we'll try to solve the question. Okay, we're able to figure out how many permutations we have. Now, out of those total permutations, how many of them are going to be arranged so that the two P's are not next to each other? So we'll solve that problem in the next video. Come back and join us for that video.